morning, noon, or night, wherever you may be, we welcome you as we come together and connect, connect with each other through all our emotions. There are many emotions. There may be frustration, there may be some anger, but the Christ cable, which connects us, is a cable of love. And with this love, let us light the Christ candle. The flame dances forth from the Christ candle, connecting all of us in these times. And the candle of reconciliation and I light the candle of reconciliation and peace. I also want to acknowledge the sacred lands that we reside on, Treaty 20, that these lands are members of our First Nations peoples, that we honor their stories and we work together to make right with all our relations. Amen.
us center ourselves in prayer. As we walk forward through the summer days, and there's different stages of the seasons, invoke different feelings within our heart. There's different stages of the reopening process, which also invoke different feelings. Through Christ's compass, let's examine these feelings and use them, use them to embody Christ's spirit and open up the doors of our heart to each other with patience, love, empathy, and grace. Christ's name I pray, amen. Grow in faith. A probably recognize this name. A Canadian author, Margaret Atwood. This COVID, this COVID maze, when does it end? I don't know. Uh, sometimes I feel like a rat in a maze. For me, that's appropriate because under the Chinese New Year, I actually, I am a rat. Now let's explore, let's explore Margaret Atwood. A rat in a maze is free to go anywhere. Okay, free to go anywhere, as long as it stays in the maze. Let's reflect on these words by Margaret Atwood and continue forth in worship, amen. Samuel chapter 7 
verses 1 to 7. God's covenant with David. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I am commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Let us walk into David's world. And the lineage of David into a boat with Jesus as he teaches the multitudes in front of him. First, let's begin something of our neighbors in God's creation of many languages, music, different types of music, cultures, food. When we look at the situation we're in currently, a lot of emotions, this reopening process. We can look at it as crisis, again, or opportunity. I'm gonna take this from the Chinese language, Mandarin, okay? Putting that right on the screen right now, and when you're looking at it, uh, like I referenced earlier, it may look like a maze. Uh, quote from Margaret Atwood, uh, may feel like a rat, what on earth does that mean? Those are the Chinese characters for crisis and opportunity. Something I want to point out. The next image you see on the screen, you see they're the same, same character. The characters for crisis and opportunity, crisis being very different than opportunity, are actually similar. All you do within the Chinese language, specifically Mandarin, is just add a second character and the crisis becomes an opportunity. So, now what can we learn from this as we continue forward with the reopening process? Remember what I just said, adding one character and the crisis becomes an opportunity. Let's first begin with the prophet Nathan. 2 Samuel 7, 1. And King David, in his leisure time, is pointing out that he has a lovely house of cedar. I mean, I bet you this house of cedar, it's probably got some special spray on it too. The termites can't get at it, so he's probably nice and cushy. Whereas the ark, it's sitting in a tent. Think about that. The ark... Okay, God, God's home, but King David, he's got the nice house of cedar. So he's telling Nathan, oh, look at this. This is quite a discrepancy. That's an obvious uh, point he's making. But now what happens during the reign of King David is the plans are laid out, specifically in 1 Kings 6. Whatever, how it was done, I don't know the process. During the time of King David, you'd have like today, architectural blueprints would be designed. So the first blueprints, however that looks like 3,000 years ago, of the temple are first envisioned during the reign of King David. Now Nathan, he does something interesting 
I want to take this out of our reading from 2 Samuel 7.1. He tells King David, we must do all we can to promote the good designs and purposes of others. Let's look at that. We must do all we can to promote the good designs and purposes of others. As we examine and reflect on Nathan's words to King David, look in our current context, where we are in our community of faith. How are we doing that in our lives today as we continue forward, promoting the good designs and purposes of others? We do this together. Very, very exciting things will happen. Let's now return to 2 Samuel. David, King David wants this magnificent, glorious temple. The second reflection question, does God need a house to begin with? Okay, does God actually need magnificent doors, the inner? Does God need all these things? When you think of church, okay, a building, church building, could look like this. See on the screen, of course, this is Trinity. Could look like this. It's Providence. Now, it might even look something like this. And what's this? Uh, this is what you see on the screen is Washington National Cathedral. Yeah, quite a challenge to uh, keep the cathedral running smoothly. Uh, so if it's challenging here, wow, hallelujah, a lot of prayers. Uh, it's a much bigger challenge to keep the cathedral running. Now, I'm going to put up my own vision of a church, okay? I'm going to do this as we transition first to Second Testament, Old Testament to New. It's a little movie. Here it is. You see the ocean, okay? Big ocean. First of all, you don't see any buildings, no walls, no doors, except this white thing. Okay, so you see that's coming, coming towards you. What is that? Hmm, it's a door, okay. Hmm, it's closed. Hmm, aha, but it's opening. Ah, whoa, wait, wait a minute, there's somebody there. It's opening, op open. And who do we see? None other than Jesus. That's right. And he's telling us something. Follow me. This is my own idea of the church. When we look back in the past few weeks, We've drawn connections from the elements, the three items inside the ark to Jesus. The lineage of King David, King Solomon, okay, builds the actual, the, set, the, the temple, same lineage as Jesus. And now, today, go back to what Nathan said. We must do all we can to promote the good designs and purposes of others? It's a, it's a very good question to ask, especially people who are just coming into the Christian faith or who have even been born into it, been in for many years. How can, how can Jesus be the temple? That's a good question, because there's no walls. The property committee doesn't have to worry about looking after the leaky plumbing or anything. I mean, no, that's a good deal. And look, it doesn't get overrun by some invading army. It's Jesus is there, smiling, non-judgmental love. We may feel awful, we may have had an awful day, but Jesus is still there to love us. Let's transition. Um, but first, I want to look something outside biblical text, specifically King David. He's known for the Psalms of David and his wisdom. How wise was King David? Well, a verse I want to show, show you, taken from the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 251, right on the screen. We gave to King David his wisdom and authority. So even when you look 
at King David, outside the Bible, his authority and his wisdom is recognized. Remember, this is a foundation, okay? The lineage of Jesus to come. So let's make that journey. John 2.19. This temple shall be destroyed, and I shall raise it in three days. Who was raised in three days? Mark 14.58. Not the year 14.58, chapter 14, verse 58. This temple destroyed, I shall rebuild it without hands. Okay? The temple is destroyed, but the new temple is going to be built, raised in three days, without any human hands, no mortar, okay? Well, no doors. Okay. One more. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What's that? Your body is a temple, not of your own. The focus, the focus is Christ Jesus, not the bricks. Jesus being the temple. And as we continue forward in our journey and we open the door and see Jesus right there looking back at us. We actually don't even need to open the door because Jesus is always there with us. Always. And the question to uh, ask, which I have been, is how do we develop a relationship? Because it's easier to see um, a building, an edifice, bricks you can actually touch, a door you can knock on, a doorbell. I mean, there's no Jesus doorbell. Um, how do you do this? Well, we have prayer. We have our faith. But let's just look just at the history. Jesus was a real human being. He went through many trials, tribulations, his own people rejected him and was crucified. Died a horrible death. What did he do as a profession? Likely worked with wood for many years. Some scholars believe he even helped build the Gentile city of Sephoris, which is near his hometown. So, right in our own community of faith, John Carson had a similar profession as Jesus. That's pretty auspicious. Congratulations. As we go build, we work with our hands. We take the different pieces of wood and put them together. Okay? We can build a path, construct it with the help of Christ's compass outside of the maze. That's right, outside of the maze, into the boat, into the boat with Jesus on the open water, sail with Christ Jesus to the multitude that he is approaching. There is no shepherd. He approaches them to teach them, to teach them the gospel message as we endeavor to do through our own community of faith here in the Korthas, our family members who could be in different countries and friends and share, share the gospel message with all the nations throughout the world. As we reflect on this time, I ask you to speak with your own family members. I've had some very interesting visits this past week. How do your friends? Perhaps maybe don't go to church. Maybe some children, other loved ones, who may not have thought of coming to church before. How do they feel about church? 
How do they feel about God? How do they feel about Jesus? We have this precious time to explore these questions. And when the physical doors reopen, let's take that risk to talk publicly, to talk publicly about our faith, that we ourselves can help open the door that Christ Jesus can enter our world in the 21st century. Think about that. In conclusion, I ask you to reflect on this, that you yourselves, you yourselves have the power and the ability, okay, you do, to open the door that Christ Jesus' love can permeate throughout the lands, not just in our community, but communities beyond. We can do this. Our New Testament readings, I'm going to put them right on the screen. John 2, 19, Mark 14, 58, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. You are the temple. All of us, we come together and we will embody Christ's presence here on earth. And glorious days, glorious, exciting days are ours in Bob Cajun and Providence Pastoral Charge. Christ has died, he has risen, he shall come again. Amen. concerns and announcements. Let's begin. Something sad still going on and we'll probably hear more, um, but there were an additional, an additional, 160 unmarked graves found at a former residential school site near Van Vancouver Island. So this new story in a series of them is still continuing let us continue to remember the sacred lands that we do live on and continue to strive to make peace with all our relations. Also, uh, last night was the Providence reopening. Uh, so we, there was a very good meeting and I met some people for the first time. And I look forward to uh, seeing all of you at Providence in a worship service, which I will be there. Sunday, September 12th. Um, we also, Vibe is being offered through Zoom. 
this year, okay? It'll be the first time, it's all electronic. Uh, July 19th to the 22nd, 26th to the 29th, and August 9th through the 12th. Also, uh, another story happened in Hamilton, Ontario, and let's remember that we're all God's children. Um, in, not Hamilton's about two and a half hours from here at Bob Cajun, there was a group of women, specifically Muslim women, who were attacked. Um, no fault of their own, just walking on the city street. This type of behavior, it has no place in our country. My own understanding of God is broad, inclusive, and it's limited because I'm a human being. I will never fully grasp the immense generosity of God's love and the power of God's creation. But let us remember the minorities living in our country and continue, continue to learn from them and make peace. Also, uh, some other announcements, birthdays, uh, Pat Warren, Kathy Bennett, Patrick Ward and Susan Murray, birthdays coming up. Also anniversaries, Linda and Fred Kerr, Mary and Bud Justice, and Mary and Gordon Weymouth and Joyce and Ted Jones anniversaries coming up. Also, uh, I ask you um, under your own prayers, okay, uh, to please keep Catherine Junkin in your prayers, Whittold Bruins, this is Sue's dad, and some good news, Diane McGregor is coming out of the hospital. This is exciting. Um, also, I ask you to, this is a challenge. Um, I still, when I do the worship services, it's not a big crowd in front of me. Uh, but I want to say thank you for the people coming forth. This is, for me, it's something exciting because as I look in front of me for the first time, this is exciting. Sue's not exactly standing in front of me, which she usually is. So uh, I want to say thank you, Al, for taking the leap forward in the, in the darkness of COVID as we figure out what this new normal is going to look like. Um, so I want to thank you. Uh, I've received emails, people volunteering to help with the COVID screening process. I am grateful for that because the reopening committee needs your help. And our second meeting will be July the 28th. And if you have concerns, comments, to please share them with the reopening committee. Thank you. For our global community, I also ask to pray for the people in South Africa. Through many cities, looting and violence is taking place. Also, global cases of COVID, Indonesia, Brazil, India, Africa, the global cases of COVID are actually now starting to rise. COVID is gonna be a difficult Goliath to defeat, but we can do it. We can do it by working together. There may be some people in your own life which also may be going through some difficult times, but I ask, let's just take a brief moment and remember, whether it be our friends, loved ones, or maybe strangers, right here in this community, or halfway around the world, who are going through challenging moments, let us take a moment of silence for them. Creator, for the names that I've mentioned, for the people who struggle, also for people who are in positions of decision-making and the decisions they make may affect millions, perhaps even billions 
governments around the world, local governments. God, we ask you to guide them. God, we ask you to be with people who are in hospital. God, we ask you to people who are recovering at home. God, we also ask you to be with our community of faith as we walk forward and as we do our best, humanly possible, to honor, honor our feelings and emotions. And as the prophet Nathan tells us right in 2 Samuel 7, 1, to uplift the good designs and purposes of others, God help us to see that in our community and experience what I strongly feel in my heart are exciting days for Bob Cajun and Providence Pastoral Church. Amen. And now let us proceed with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power the glory, forever and ever. And amen. exactly what I'm telling you folks. Yes, there may be challenging times. You may feel like a rat stuck in a maze, but there are exciting, there really are exciting days ahead where we will grow together in faith. We will do that. And we will also grow not only spiritually, we will grow numerically. And with these numbers, let us throw the numbers up in the air. And I want to say thank you for the different ways that all of you are helping your community of faith. Whether it be cleaning around the building, whether they be helping with the sound system, or the video camera, or the music, the scripture reading, or coming to all the committee meetings, whether it's the prayer circle, the reopening, there's numerous ways, numerous, three ways that you can give financially to your community of faith. Pre-authorized remittance, writing a check, to Trinity United Church or e-transfer. Uh, we are grateful and we work and strive hard to embody the presence and the love of Christ Jesus. Let us lift this love in song. Offerings, 
with our hands, we offer ourselves as a part of the temple. The temple as we open the doors in our heart to each other. It's scary to be vulnerable, to open yourself up to different emotions. It's challenging. But with the Christ compass, give us the courage to talk with each other and the even greater courage to love each other, no matter what words are said. Bless, take these blessings and help us multiply them with your love, grace, and mercy, Lord. Amen. Now, for our commissioning and benediction, what I want to raise out to you, my hands, okay? To connect. Because with our hands, they connect. And it's hard to do that in a pandemic. Okay? It's difficult, especially uh, some of the scary news stories we read. We're looking at new ways of connection, new ways of creating empathy. I've done this before. And I'll do this with some of my pastoral visits. You see the position of my hands. There's actually no body contact. Um, namaste. Uh, from the Hindu tradition. Meaning, the soul in me recognizes the soul in you. Uh, those of you who practice yoga will immediately recognize this. Um, you may have heard it, the light in me recognizes the light in you. The peace in me recognizes the peace in you. That doesn't matter what word you use. It's the intention, okay? The intention. And the intention that I have as I walk forward, especially with the reopening committee, is to honor, honor all of you with love and respect, even in the presence of challenging conversations, because they're gonna happen. But that's how we grow. That's how we can be authentic and we'll grow in Christ's love, both spiritually and numerically. Namaste. Let us uplift this love in our going forth music. <laughs>